You're listening to the Journey to Launch podcast. This is episode 106, Creating Financial Freedom and Wealth on Your Own Terms with Bola from Clever Girl Finance. T minus 10 seconds. Welcome to the Journey to Launch podcast with your host, Jamila Souffrant. As a money expert who walks her talk, she helps brave journeyers like you get out of debt, save, invest, and build real wealth. Join her on the journey to launch to financial freedom in, in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, 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 journeyers. Welcome to the Journey to Launch podcast. If you are a returning journeyer, you know what's up. And if you're new to the podcast, buckle up, sit down. We're ready to take off. So hold on to your seats. <laughs> And I'm excited because I am talking to a personal finance friend, another friend in the personal finance space that I actually know in real life. So I love when I have these laid back conversations. You'll, you'll probably hear the laid back approach in my conversation with Bola. We really just go back and forth in terms of our own thoughts and ideas about financial freedom and why you should be pursuing wealth on your own terms. So I really think you're going to enjoy this. Now, Bola was already on the podcast. She was on episode 22. She is the creator of Clever Girl Finance. And I've always uh, admired Bola's business savvy and hustle and how she's grown her platform. And you'll hear me talk about that in the conversation with Bola that when I first started Journey to Launch and I had like 10 followers and Bola had was way more just like established and doing her thing and she was doing it full time. It really inspired me to feel like I could do it too. So I always like got to give it up to her for inspiring me in this way. And she's back on the podcast to talk about her new book. So her book is out now. It's called Clever Girl Finance, Ditch Debt, Save Money and Build Real Wealth. So you can get that wherever you buy books. And Bola was gracious enough to give me a copy to give away to a listener. I'm excited about that. And so if you listen to last week's episode with Christy and Bryce, you know I am on a book giveaway spree. And with that, this week's giveaway is Bola's book. Now, if you want to win Bola's book, if you want to enter for your chance to win, you can go to journeytolaunch.com slash win. And Bola's book giveaway will be from July 17th. So if you're listening to this in real time, July 17th to July 23rd, go to journeytolaunch.com slash win, enter your name and email, and you'll be entered for your chance to win. And not only that, You'll be entered for a chance to win the book, but you'll also get access to my resource library for free where you'll get some tools, tips, resources to help you with your journey to financial freedom. I have about nine workbooks in there, worksheets to help you. There's a debt matrix payoff worksheet. There's a savers challenge booklet. There are tons and tons of things in there that will help you. So you're just going to get that regardless if you win or not. And I'm doing this because I want to show some gratitude to you guys for listening to the podcast, for helping me reach the two year anniversary mark. And so that's my gift to you. Now, if you want the episode show notes for anything that I'm talking about with Bola, you can go to journey to launch.com slash episode 106. Once again, journey to launch.com slash episode 106 for the episode show notes. And then of course, make sure you're following me on social media. I'm at journey to launch. Now, without further ado, let's hop into this conversation with Bola. Okay, journeyers, I'm excited to bring you this conversation with Bola Sukunbi of Clever Girl Finance. Bola is actually a repeat guest on the podcast. Hey, Bola. Hey, Jamila. Now, just a little backstory. I love always just being like open with listeners. This is our third time trying to record this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> it's almost 10 p.m., <laughs> but we're going to make this happen. We're still, ex- I mean, I'm excited to have you on, Bola. So energy up, right? <laughs> we're going to do this. Yes, we are going to do this. We have to make all the effort we took to put our kids to bed worth it <laughs> so right, we can record right. this podcast. Right. So one of the things that I love about Bola and her story is, and I always have to say this every time I talk about you, Bola, is that you were one of the first people that I met in this personal finance space. Like back when, probably three years ago, when I first started Journey to Launch and I had a couple hundred followers and I was like, hmm, I can like maybe do this, maybe like make it something like legit. And you at the time had like 30 something thousand followers, something crazy in my head. I was like, oh my God. Right. And you, myself and our, my, our friend Dorianne, um, from, uh, your career girl, like we kind of had this like mini mastermind. We would like chat 
And I was just so encouraged. One, I, I, I was so encouraged by like seeing the behind the scenes of you like and your business because it was like a legit business. You were doing it full time. And then I just felt like you were very open. Like some people like, you know, like they're a little bit more like, um, and rightfully so, right? They're not as maybe open about like giving advice and stuff. And you were always like willing to just like give advice. And so I always appreciated that about you. And so it's amazing to see now since we like connected all those years ago, like how much more Clever Girl Finance has grown. So it's really amazing. Yeah. And I'm excited to see how much you have grown. When we, when we connected, you were considering, you know, leaving your job and pursuing your dream of journey to launch full time. And now you're doing it. And so that is exciting to see the growth all around. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And so I did want to get into a little bit of your backstory and your own money story, because I feel like maybe some people don't know who you are or your platform. Although like at this point, I feel like it's grown so much, but can you just give a little just quick intro of you and what Clever Girl Finance is all about. Yes. So I'm Bola. I am a certified financial education instructor. I'm also the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance and author of a book by the same name. And Clever Girl Finance is an online empowerment platform for women with a focus of helping women achieve financial wellness on their own terms. So it's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I put my heart into this business and I'm just working really hard to bring it out to the world. Right. And you're also teaching from experience, meaning you have your own like amazing money story. So I do want to touch upon that and like your claim to fame. We all have our kind of like (laughs) our headline, like title. So what's yours? So it's a story that people either love or they hate. And it is um, my saving story. Um, When I first came out of college, I was able to save over $100,000 in about three and a half years. Um, And that in itself was quite the experience. Um, As you know, Jamila, you have been there, done that (laughs) multiple times over. And so, yeah, it was just, you know, getting intentional, putting my head down to the ground and just really sacrificing to prove to myself that I could make this accomplishment. And once I did it, it was like just tons of doors opened because in my mind's eye, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I did this. And then it was like, oh my God, if I did this, what can't I do? Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, that's my um, most famous money story. (laughs) Right. And you know, it's interesting because I find that this happens a lot, like in the personal finance space is that, you know, you'll see the headlines and some of it is like, you know, it is the shock. I mean, it's true. Most of it. I know our stories are true, right? And it is to kind of like shock people. And it's not meant to like make people feel bad or, you know, like it's not a comparison thing, but it is something where it's just like you're proud of what you're able to accomplish. You want to share it with the world because you want to inspire people. But I like that you said people either like it or hate it because I do find that there's a criticism from people who like, whatever, like if you're looking inside at or out from the outside in are saying like, you know, well, easy for you to do, or they make assumptions about like um, your experience. And so I've had that happen to me too. Like when, you know, my claim to fame being, okay, I saved and invested with my husband $169,000, right? But I feel like it's important to, not that you have to always justify like the kind of work it took to do that, but it's, it's interesting because these same headlines allow people to like dream big and to see what's possible. But sometimes I can understand why someone who maybe doesn't feel like they can do that how it may be a little discouraging but for me it's just like I'm just like but it's like my truth right it's the story that I want to mm-hmm. share so how do you feel about that because I know that you got some pushback <laughs> about your story you know my rich husband um, <laughs> even though I was saving when I was single <laughs> right right um so this is how I look at these things um those headlines those stories that other people of the things other people accomplish is part of what inspired me and motivate, motivated me to even think that I could accomplish what I did. And, you know, I always look at the glass half full, not half empty. And my philosophy is, even if I cannot relate to your story, even if, you know, it seems outlandish for me, what can I take from what you shared that I can apply or figure out how to? That's all, how I look at everything, like anything I consume. Um, and I think some people just if they cannot relate to it directly, if we don't live in the same city, we didn't make the same income, we don't have the same type of education, we don't have the same type of family background, then, oh my God, there's no way I can ever do that. And I think that's less about the person who the story is about and more about that individual and their mindset, right? So 
I, I'm just like, you know, this is a story. You take what you want from it and then just throw away the rest and apply the things that make sense to you to help you grow. And it's, it's crazy because everyone that I've seen, and it doesn't have to be like business success, but financial success or just people who have done things, um, they have the same mindset. It's not necessarily about what isn't. It's about like what is, and it's about creating opportunities from obstacles. It's interesting now, like kind of being on this side of things and you get the criticism. And listen, at the end of the day, like they're like the conversation around privilege, like everyone to me, if you're listening to this podcast, you have a level of privilege because you have access to whatever, however you're listening to it, where, you know, people like, I know Bola, like where you're, you can talk about your family background a little bit, but even like where, like well, my mom growing up and like their level of poverty and how they like was, was were able to rise above and put us on great paths, like is helpful. So I just always feel like it's important to acknowledge like, you know, the privilege that we've had or the, uh, how do you say, like just advantages, but that was not without like, obstacles, right? It's just the way you looked at it. It was the opportunities that you created from it. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is that when you, when we share these stories, we, we only share a portion of it, right? We never get the opportunity to share our entire background because then that becomes a whole book. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I like to tell people is that, yes, this is my story, but it's not unique. It's not special. Like once you step into this personal finance phase of people who are doing things to pursue financial independence, you'll find that there are so many people who have even more incredible stories. There's nothing special about my own. Like, you know, there are people, there are tons and tons of people who have like, just been like, you know what, I'm going to be inspired by this. I'm going to go and change my money story. And so it's important to look at it that way. Like you have talked about, you know, your background with your mom, moving hair, cleaning houses. Um, to be able to get you to where you are, right? My, my mm-hmm. dad was the son of someone who didn't believe in education. My dad started grade one, first grade when he was 13 years old. So people don't really understand all those things. Like my mom, um, you know, when she was born, her parents didn't give her a name because they expected her to die. You know, so people, you know, you never get a chance to tell the full story. And so it's people start to make assumptions. They don't really know where you're coming from. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, no, it's just, it's, it's just interesting, but you know, and it's also not about the money. Like I know that the headline and it's like, you know, when you have a six figure, like, um, number, it does, it does turn heads, but it's all relative too. And I always say you should be proud. Like every step along the journey is something you should be proud of. So whether that's paying off a credit card or finally getting a budget that works and all these little steps that accumulate into the big goals, like that's important too. Um, and so, to try and give yourself a lot of credit. So I know a lot of journeyers like listening, like some of them are at the beginning of their journey. Some are a little bit more advanced. We're all at different stages and still working right towards something most of the time. So to, you know, be patient with yourself and only use these stories for inspiration and not to compare and to feel bad <laughs> about anything. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes the people that are giving you the criticism, the biggest voices are secretly inspired by what you're doing. Listen, I will be the first person to criticize, I don't know, Beyonce for her dance moves. Oh, her shorts were too short. But guess what I'm doing when I lock myself in the bathroom? I'm practicing those exact same dance moves. Oh, listen, don't <laughs> let the, the beehive will come for you, Bola. I have to beehive listener. <laughs> no, but I'm saying that I lock oh, myself I in the bathroom yeah. in front of the mirror and I'm practicing those same dance moves I was hating on. Okay, so right. there's inspiration somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Like, it's hard to, um, it's like secret, like, that's what you say. Like, the whole, I actually don't subscribe to the hater theory. Like, I really don't. Like, I, if I have some, I don't even know they exist. Like, I don't know what that is, but they always, that's that saying that, like, um, every hater is like a fan. Anyway, I'm not trying to call anyone a hater, like, <laughs> who doesn't think they can do this thing, but I think that it's something that's, um, just something I wanted to bring up because I felt like we both kind of went through that kind of like these headlines and then people kind of making assumptions yeah, about yeah. it, but okay. So I don't know. I want to like talk a bit about your book. Your book, it, it was released to June. What was the release date? It actually comes out next Tuesday, June 25th. Next, which what this may come out a little bit after that. So okay. <laughs> June, so it'll be out already um, by then. So definitely pick it up. But let's talk a little bit about some of the like baseline foundation things that every clever girl should be doing with their finances. Yes. Yeah, so Baseline things are the things that you probably talk about all the time on the podcast, right? It is getting a handle on your debt. It is creating a a plan to save for retirement, um, mapping out your goals, dealing with your student loans, building up your assets through investing. 
Um, but one of the really important things that I spent, you know, the beginning of the book focusing on is really getting clear on what your background with money is and using those lessons and the things that you want to change about your background, the things that you want to change going into the future to adjust your mindset on what you think you can or can't accomplish with your finances and really start to break down those, this is why I cannot and figure out why you're thinking that way. So you can start to focus on how you can and why you can succeed with your finances. So I think one of the baseline things um, when it comes to just building wealth or getting to a point where you can say I'm financially well on my own terms is having the right mindset, having an open mind to be able to succeed with your money. Because when you're when your headspace is not right, it doesn't matter how many tips and tricks or books or blog posts you read about budget, <laughs> pay off debt. Like yeah. if your head is not right, like to hell with that stuff. You're not going to do it. And then any of the changes that you make are not sustainable either because like that root foundation stuff is not a strong, right? Um, and so exactly. it's really important. Um, so in terms of like, so this is like, you know, I, I went through the book a bit and it's literally like a manual, right? To help people from like start to finish, um, really like some good foundation stuff to help with their finances. If, you know, someone right now, I feel like most people who listen to the show already understand what they need to do and are working their way towards that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I always say like, I'm a big fan of income, you know, like increasing income and yes, expenses are important, like optimizing it. What I like about, so your platform, you know, it's not, it's not like the, you know, I'm in the, I guess I'm a part of the fire movement or the fire community in the sense that, okay, financial independent retire early. Right. And then to me, that's like a sub segment, sub sub segment of the general personal finance community. And I feel Mm -hmm. like your blog or your, your website, your platform is more like general personal finance. But what I like about that is that, you know, you don't necessarily like you, you talk about value spending, which we talk about too in like the fire community, but I like that. It's never, it's not, you spend money. Like I spend money. I think that's sometimes where I get like tripped up with being labeled like in the fire movement is because like, you know, not everyone is like a Mr. Money mustache and not everyone's super frugal. And if you are, that's great. But I like that. Like you give people room to like want to like spend money and like have nice things. It's more about making sure they're spending in alignment with their goals and they can actually afford those things. Yeah. So you made a great point in terms of like the differences between like general finance and the subset of the fire movement, which is an incredibly amazing movement. But yeah, so, you know, the book is more so a manual. It's basically like the book I wish I had when I was trying to figure out the beginnings of that hundred K savings. And when I got to the other side of it, I was trying to figure out, okay, what do I do next? And the biggest challenge for me was that I had to find a bunch of different sources that I couldn't necessarily directly relate to that are written by white Caucasians who wanted to retire early and backpack through hostels in Europe, which is not my thing. So that's basically what it is. And so it's basically like focuses on mindset, but also guides you through, okay, what are the things you need to do to build a financial plan and get your money in order for your current and your future self? Yeah. So it's very general finance. Um, from a fire perspective, you know, I, this is actually something that I was thinking about for a podcast episode because I think there's a lot of negativity about fire. Um, and even I have faced pushback, right? You know, about, you know, retiring early and, um, what does it really mean to retire early? Cause some people, um, you know, they, they, they say they can retire early on $25,000 a year or $40,000 a year. And that's great for some people, but that's not my idea of um, <laughs> but, but retirement yeah. because well, <laughs> I like to spend money. Right. Well, here's the thing. I think, and and that is something where it's like, it differs for everyone. Yeah. Right. It's really going to be like driven by what, like what you feel comfortable doing and what makes you happy because there are literally like, I've interviewed them. Like there are some people who are like super happy, like backpacking, like around the world and not like staying, you know, in nice place, like in luxury places, or they're spending thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year or less and they're fine. Um, and, or they're super frugal, but you know, but they're actually happy, seemingly happy doing that. And I believe them, right? Like they seem happy doing that. And then like I'll interview other like, uh, people in the fire space who are like what considered like fat fire. So that's where like, not just the bare bones, like maybe, you know, just doing what you can or, you know, you, you're living super frugal, but it's like, you're actually like, 
there's budget line items for going out to eat and, you know, spending money, like probably above, um, what I don't know the average is. So like I've heard and like, there's like, you know, anyone can make up these like bands. Right. But they say like fat fire would be like spending maybe a hundred thousand, 80,000 or up right mm-hmm. a year. And then like, like um lean fire is like 20 to 30,000. Like, don't quote me on this, but like, that's kind of <laughs> like the bands if you're wondering. Right. And so if you look at kind of where you are now, anyone listening, you're like, Oh, what kind of like, what does financial independence mean to me? And I think it's important to look at it in stages. And so, you know, there is a level of comfort if you, reach a lean fire. Like, let's just say you're saving and investing and you look up and in 10 years, you say, wow, my investments have grown to where I can actually quit my job, but I would have to live very like frugally to like, to make that work. But that's a great stage to be in. Cause at the end of the day, if anything happens and you did have to walk away, you do have something, right? But then there's a level that you keep on going because you're like, well, I know I'm not going to be happy or I'm not going to be satisfied with that lifestyle. So I'm going to keep going. And so I think for most people, it's like having that option because it's also changing the mindset about retiring early, which is why a lot of people don't like the RE part of it. Like the financial independent part is what everyone should be working towards because it's like shooting for the moon. But even if you miss that goal, like you'll be in a better place. So it's like, why not aim for financial independence? Right. But I think because what retire means for most people, like the traditional, like, you know, you never work again. And for most people that I've talked to, like they are, they're working and they're making actually more money than they did when they were traditionally working. So it's not about never working again. It's more about working, doing what you want without worrying about money, you know? Yeah. And I, I love the way you you broke it down. And, you know, like a couple of things you said. So it's personal, right? You determine if your 25K or your 40K is what you want to do, what is going to work for you if you're backpacking across Europe and, you know, doing the hostel thing. And that's what truly makes you happy. Then that's what it is. And my platform, Clever Finance, is about pursuing financial wellness on your own terms. My challenge with the FIRE movement <laughs> is this, and I've had countless conversations and listened to many podcasts where if you're not pursuing somebody's idea of FIRE, so let's say my idea of FIRE is I'm going to live on $30,000 a year. If everybody else is not pursuing that, then it becomes a whole judgment And, you know, I've listened to people actually talk, well, you know, they bought this thing and just so wasteful. And so, and I don't like that because I think, you know, finance, financial independence, retiring early is a personal thing and everybody determines what they decide to be, you know, as financially well. So if I was to put myself into the FIRE community, I would say I retired early when I quit my job because I could very well do that. But now I'm working full time, killing myself to build a business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I'm not, you know, it, it makes me happy. It makes me excited, but I'm not necessarily doing the other things I want to do right now because I'm sacrificing those things to build this one thing here, you know, like things like traveling with my family and, you know, all those other things. So that's, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of the fire movement, but I'm just not a fan of the judgment associated with it mm-hmm. when you're not pursuing other people's idea of fire. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I think that perception is definitely like a valid one and it can be real. But I find that for like it's it's a perception. And again, there's some people who are judgy. I think the judgment comes in from people where this is why everyone needs to be more aware of how their spending affects their goals. Right. Because it's the it's the idea that people complain about not like enjoying their job or having all these bills and being in debt. But then turn around and maybe make not great financial choices. So the judgment kind of comes probably in. That's a whole well, you, problem. <laughs> right. And so I feel like that's just a baseline thing. And, you know, but I think at the end of the day, no one really actually knows. Like, so if you see someone like driving, whatever, a nice car, right? Sometimes, you know, you make the assumption like, oh, like I wonder like what that payment is like. And I feel like some of that like judgy comes out. Like, why do you have to like want so much, right? Like such a consumer society. And I get that. But I feel like you don't know, like that person, maybe they're a millionaire. Maybe they don't like it's, they it's paid in full. Like, um, and so again, it's more about understanding. Like if you want those nice things, quote unquote, cause that's relative also what nice means. Um, then you can have that as long as you are spending and saving and investing in alignment with your values yep, exactly. and your goals, but then don't turn around and be like, Oh, I like, you know, I hate my job. I want to retire early, but or reach financial independence but you're like, you want to like keep a car note, right? That you really can't afford. So I think yeah, that- but I'm buying the Lamborghini next week. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, you're buying the Lamborghini next week. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, see, that's the thing. So, and he, and, oh, and so here's another thing about even like my story. So my husband, right? When I came home and I told him, like, I found out about this thing, like, oh my gosh, honey, like you have to like hear this. Like there are people who are quitting their jobs, traveling the world, doing whatever they want. We have to do this. We got to figure this out. And like, of course, like with his buy-in and some conversation, he got on board. But I know like deep down, like, because we got rid of our quote unquote luxury cars because it's like economical, like this is going to make more sense for us. But I know like he, 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 he was on the podcast also. And he said, um, when I was interviewing about like how it's like for him or to like kind of, you know, watch me do this and be a part of this journey and save as much as we were saving. And he's like, sometimes, you know, like even with like the car situation, he wishes he had like a nicer car or just something like, you know, cause he values that. Yeah. And even though like investing and saving and reaching our financial independence mark is still very important to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I would love to be able to like surprise him. Like the fact that he supported me so like much on this journey. And like, I would love to like one day, like surprise him with like the car of his the car. Journey. Yeah. Now that's not typically like something you probably maybe hear like um, coming from someone who's talking about pursuing financial independence, but then it's like, I also don't want to put like paint a broad stroke because you know, there are people who are listening who are, who do things like that. And it's like, you know what? If I like nice cars, I like nice cars. Like there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. It's perfectly fine. Listen, I'm of the opinion that you know, what's in your bank account, you know, what your financial goals are, you know, where you need to get to. And if you're not, you know, we're not here on this earth to save and die. <laughs> we're here to <laughs> at least work hard. And after we work hard, reap the fruit of our labor and then give back, help others, help society, improve our children's lives, et cetera. And so if you're in that space where you have achieved all your financial goals or you're very clearly on the path, you don't have debt associated to the gift that you want to give, you can live a little. I'm like, that's my opinion. Like, honestly, if it is, if it's my dream to buy a Lamborghini, I don't know why I'm talking about Lamborghini, but you know, I must have seen an ad something somewhere. But if it's my dream to buy a Lamborghini, for example, and my financial goals are set, my kids' college, which is one of my goals, is paid for in cash in full, you know, mortgage paid off, everything paid off, and I have $25 million. Like, what's how much does a Lamborghini cost? What's 200,000? What's 300,000? You know, like, right. What am I going to do with that money? Are they going to bury me with it? Or am I going to leave it to my cat? Like, <laughs> and, but I think, and I think that's why sometimes the fire, like the financial independent needs a bit of like people like me and like a little bit, bit rebranding because I think there are people who are interested in, in understanding what this means. Cause I think everyone wants the ability to walk away from something that's not serving them or something, you know, to walk and work in their purpose. Everyone I think would want that. But in order to do that, you got to set yourself up to do that. And you got to make sure your financial house is in order. I think sometimes what scares people is that it's just like, wait a second. But like, I do like to go out to eat and I do like to do these things. And then I always say this, everyone, don't think I'm just like switching up because I'm, I'm talking to Bola and Bola's fancy, right? Like, I still believe it. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it, girl. I am. Right. <laughs> right. And that's fine. But I, I, I still. That's don't why believe. I work so hard. <laughs> right. Well, I believe in still prioritizing. Okay, I hope you are enjoying today's episode, but let me just take a quick, quick moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Gusto. You witnessed my journey to uplevel my life, my finances, and now you're actually watching me uplevel my business. I went from being an employee to being self-employed, and the next step is becoming an employer. Hiring people to not only help me bring my vision to life, but give them opportunities and outlets to help them support themselves, their families, and their own dreams. And so I'm always looking for tools and ways in which I can effectively run my business. So if you have a business or you know someone who does, you probably know that small business owners wear lots of hats. And some of those hats are totally great, but some like filing taxes and running payroll, for example, are not so great. That's where Gusto comes in. Gusto makes payroll, taxes, and HR actually easy for small businesses. Fast, simple payroll processing benefits and simple management tools all in one place. Gusto automatically pays and files your federal, state, and local taxes so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, they make it easy to add on health benefits and even 401ks for your team. Hello. So for my journeyer business owners, now you can get three months free when you run your first payroll. Try a demo and see it for yourself at gusto.com slash journey. Once again, that's gusto.com slash journey for three months free. All right, let's get back into this episode. 
it's not that you can never have nice things, but if you're in debt, you have this goal of reaching, you know, being able to walk away from your, your corporate nine to five in 10, 15 years, then you need a plan and prioritize. Yes. So mm-hmm. the Lamborghini, not today. Yeah, not in yet. 15, 20 years, or maybe not just, even if it's just not the Lamborghini, but maybe that expensive trip, not today. You do that after you reach these goals. You ha- exactly. And then I'm, and what I always um, advise people to do is like, yes, you might have this goal, like, but if you take this trip or you spend this money doing that, how far off or how much more does it delay your goal? Like, what can you, like, you know, so understanding that and still making the choice is all up to you. Priorities. You cannot have your cake and eat the entire cake at the same time. <laughs> you have to prioritize. And so I think it's a couple of things, you know, like I've talked to people who say they find this whole financial independence, like even put fire aside, they find the pursuit of financial independence, of becoming independently wealthy, unattractive, because to them, it just looks like a struggle life for the rest of your life. And I just feel like that is such that's a stereotype and it's such an inaccurate narrative. But like you said, I think parts of this whole personal finance space needs to be rebranded because for someone who's not in this space like you and me, who is not surrounded by people who are achieving goals, it can seem like that depending on what angle you're looking at it from. And like you said, it's, it's all about prioritizing your goals. If you need to get out of debt and you are trying to quit this job that you hate, and you want to buy a new car, um, when you buy the new car before you get out of debt, then you're just doing that to yourself, right? You prioritize, you pay off your debt, you find the job you love, you save the money, and you buy that car in cash so that when you're cruising down the highway, and you're looking out the windows and people are like, oh my God, there's that new, I don't know, whatever. Right. Like, yeah, paid in full in cash. <laughs> right, right, Priorities right. Priorities matter here. And something I've met, you know, people that, Perception is very weird because you see people who have like really incredibly nice or expensive or just like outlandish things. And like, oh, that person has to be in debt or that person can't afford it. But when I meet people and I sit and have conversations with them, my eyes are open to realize that that thing is like a drop in the bucket of what they have accomplished in terms of their financial goals. And it is just like, not everybody is like this, obviously, but there's some people that, oh my God, like you actually did this. And then you have to listen to their stories to understand what they had to sacrifice, the year, the, the years, the time, the relationships, all those things to get to that point where people can look at them like, oh my God, wow, look at this person. So yeah, priority. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Right, right. Um and I think it's like you said, it's important that we show like the other side um, of personal finance and that it doesn't have to be a struggle life, but you do have to make sacrifices when it comes to like, you know, reaching your goals. It's like that whole thing where it's just like, it's not that you have to work at it, but if you surround yourself with, you know, cheerleaders or, or a squad that's like supportive and that can be virtually right and do like programs or whatever that is, education, like you feel supported like on this journey because it's not going to be like, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to do things that are uncomfortable. Like no one's ever like achieved anything great, like in their comfort zone. You're preaching to the choir. Listen, we're both running businesses. <laughs> we can I know. We can keep talking. I... Everyone's just like, <laughs> okay, Bola and Jamila. <laughs> I saw this, I saw this Instagram post the other day and I'll send you the picture after we talk. And it was two pictures side by side. The first one had a young man. He was like really fresh faced. And the caption was thinking about starting a business. And then the second, (laughs) the second picture was the same guy, but his image had been digitally manipulated. So he had wrinkles. He looked tired and haggard. And then it said actually running a business. (laughs) Well, so let's get into that. that. That's real life. And I think this would be helpful for listeners because I have a lot of listeners who are either side hustling like I was when I was like doing my full time job and doing journey salons on the side or um, they're already entrepreneurs or they're thinking about it. And we touched upon this like the first conversation we had on the podcast. But let's like dive a little bit deeper into that because. You know, entrepreneurship is a, you know, is, is ownership and it's a way to build wealth. But it's also not like, not everyone's built for this life <laughs> because it's, you know, I, I was talking to someone and they were like, you know what? I actually like my job because I like the security. I like the, <laughs> the secure paycheck. I like that, you know, I'm going to get paid versus like this running your own business is not guaranteed. So let's talk a little bit about 
what that's like, because I know a lot of people are looking to that as their savior or like that's going to like do it for them. And that's not necessarily all, always the case. <laughs> so first of all, you can 100% certainly achieve financial independence, working in nine to five, working for somebody else. Your saving story happened while you were employed for somebody else or with somebody else. My saving story happened while I was employed with somebody else. And now that I'm now that I'm self-employed, I have I have yet to save. <laughs> I have to pause that because I'm literally I mean, I'm not into the traditional retirement accounts. Like now I'm saving and investing back into the business. So, yes, keep going. Yes. Yeah, so. You know, if you're listening to this and you're feeling pressure to just start a business because you're hearing that, oh, business is the financial savior, but you love your job, like save yourself the trouble. Business is, for me, it's not about the money because if it was about the money, I would not be working. I'd be living a life of luxury <laughs> right now and, you know, doing whatever I want to do. A business is when you start a business, like what we do. Um, the money is like, a, is like a perk. We do this because there's this passion, there's this bigger why that we're pursuing. And I think it's important for people to keep that in mind. Like when you're going into business solely for money, for something you don't really care about, the, the chances that it's actually going to be successful are, are lower. Not that you can't succeed, but at some point you're going to be like, oh, I don't like this anymore. I just want to quit it. So you want to keep that in mind that when you're going into business, starting a side hustle, yes, the money is important, right? It's great to not have a cap on your income, knowing that your business could explode into like anything. But you also have to keep in mind, like, why are you doing this? And what do you want it to be able to, like, what do you want the impact of this thing to be? And so businesses like ours are more so like passion businesses. We're sharing our story. We're sharing our journeys. We are, you know, helping other people. And I think there's this misconception that I can just start any business as Instagram has shown me by next tomorrow, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be an overnight sensation balling in cash <laughs> right. millionaire. doesn't work like that. When I share like my business story, I always like to be very honest because I think a lot of times the idea of starting a business gets sugarcoated and I like to be realistic and I like to set expectations. And remind people that when you see somebody as an overnight success, um, that over- overnight success has been years and tons of time in the making to be called that overnight success. It's one of the things to like evaluate your situation. So if you are working somewhere, even if, you know, you know yourself, someone said like, if you can't like find structure in your current job, it's going to be way worse when you're your own boss. You know, like, so it's like these things that you might, like hate about what you're doing now. And you're thinking, oh, if I work for myself. And, you know, it's funny because even if you think about like the goal of financial independence and what people are working towards, like they want to be possibly able to like quit their jobs, right? And I always say this, like quitting your job and the money won't solve whatever it is that's going on inside. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just like, that's why it's so important to, like to fix that now, you you know, like, yes, it's important to have like the baseline money that you need to take care of expenses, but there's so many things that you don't have to wait to have the million dollars in the bank to experience like levels of freedom and happiness. You can do that today. That absolutely. I feel like so many people feel like because they don't have this, because they're not at this, they cannot, you know, they can't have certain types of experiences. And that's such a misconception. And to the journeyers listening, you know, I'm not saying starting a business is a bad thing. It is an amazing thing. That is why I'm still here doing this thing. (laughs) I'm just trying to set the expectations that, you know, if you love your job and you love and you're not inclined to start a business, then why give yourself the trouble? And if you are inclined to start a business and you you have this idea for a side hustle that you want to turn into a full-time thing, then be realistic about what it is that you can accomplish knowing that it's not going to be a walk in the park. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. Mm-hmm. And I would say this, like, you know, you're getting a hundred thousand dollar paycheck at a job, right? Let's say after tax. Every two weeks. Right. You know, well, with yeah, benefits, the, like the right. That's pay, different than health insurance. Like, <laughs> all the things, right? That's different than as an entrepreneur, like if I say right now, oh, okay, journey to launch made like gross, like let's just say a hundred thousand dollars, right? That's amazing. That seems, that seems amazing. And it is amazing. And I'm not saying that I made that. I'm just saying, let's just say I made that much. Take your taxes, expenses, take expenses, like <laughs> literally. And I think this is what people don't understand. Like when they hear like these numbers, oh, this business made this much or this person made this much. It's like, 
what did, what was their take home pay after they paid all those expenses and taxes and people like that's a different story. And so for me, it's, you know, it's like understanding that this is truly an investment. And while this seemingly looks like a detour right now, because I had these goals of like reach my financial independence number and by 40 and all this stuff, it's different. Like having like a pause in income, like our household income dropped more than half. But I do though recognize it's not all bad because, you know, I get to walk my son to school and I went to a PTA meeting the other day and I was like, oh, look at me. Like, you know, like things like that, which was like, so that kind of freedom is like something that for me is priceless. It's worth uh, pausing things like investing right now so I can like do what I'm doing now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that makes total sense. Like when it comes to business, one of the things we have to keep in mind is that we're starting something from the beginning, right? It's like everything that prepared you for that full-time job that was earning you six figures was you going to grade school, you going to kindergarten, grade school, middle school, high school, college, getting this job. And with your business, you're rewinding and starting right back at the baseline foundation. And you have to build that back up and it takes time and it takes effort, but the return and the dividends, if you stick to it and you work hard, oh my God. And it's not just in monetary, um, from a monetary perspective, it's just from how you feel like this schedule you're talking about, like my schedule right now, being able to show up for my kids, especially because my husband has a very unpredictable slash unreliable schedule, um, is everything. Like my kids are never alone. They're never the kid in the school that nobody showed up for their school play. Like that is, I can't even put a dollar on that. I wouldn't exchange that for anything right now because that's a huge value for me. So you're starting at the baseline you have to build and you have to give yourself that time and the grace to allow your new foundations to begin to grow. And I think that's a struggle that many um, newbie business owners or aspiring business owners or even tenured business owners have is that they want it to be quick, quick, quick. I was making six figures, you know, but you went to school, you, you worked all these other odd jobs. You had to climb the ladder over all of this time to make that six figures. Like give your business a chance. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be financially prepared for that. And then again, yes. we're not like, <laughs> right. Like to give it that, give it a chance to give it a good chance without having to worry really about like monetizing and not the like best way. And you no, know, also it's saying that to say there's, there's positives and negatives or good and bad with every situation. So for that parent, because, you know, there are parents listening who like either they do enjoy their job and they miss, they have to miss, you know, some uh, engagements. And even as an entrepreneur, like I know with you, we like, have to miss engagements too. Yeah. Still have to, like, you know, like, it's like, I, like I get asked to do things now and I'm just like, you know, depending on the opportunity, I'm just like, okay, this is, I'm going to have to miss that like for you, because this is going to actually be better in the long run. So it's really about recognizing like the pros and cons and all that. for both. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I'm talking about, you know, the schedule of not exchanging, not giving that up for anything, being there for my kids. But I'm the same person who last summer for 13 weeks, I saw my kids on Saturdays, you know, because I was in the city, staying in the city Monday to Friday or Saturday morning and seeing them on Saturday and leaving on Sunday. And that's a sacrifice I made to grow my business. So even though you're able to control your schedule, there are these perks, there are still sacrifices within all of that that you have to make for the greater good of what it is that you're trying to build. And I always tell people, like you said, you want to have the financial plan. And if it doesn't seem feasible, there's no shame in working part-time and still working full-time. I started Clever World Finance for the first year and a half as an overnight hustle. This was a business that I would go to work at eight after waking up at five with my twins and waking up multiple times you know, between like one and five after sleeping like two hours, go to work, come back like six, deal with my twins. By the time they get to bed at nine, start working until about one or two, sleep for an hour. And then somebody's like, yeah, I want it. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that I was, I don't even know how I survived. And you were driving. Your commute was insane. Yeah. Two kids pregnant. So listen, <laughs> I, I, when I think about it. <laughs> well, I just think when you're in the journey, and I think that's what gets people a little like uh, frustrated with the journey. Because yes, when you're in the thick of it, it's like, oh my gosh, like it's a lot. I, I used to say like when people ask me how I did it, like I was like, I don't think about it. I just do it. If I yeah. thought about it or I thought about the negatives, like I'd be, I'll go crazy and I wouldn't want to do it. And that's not, I don't have an option. Like I'm doing it because this is 
a means to an end. Like this is, this is going to help me get to where I want to go. So just encouragement for everyone who's yes. on the path and who you feel like, oh my gosh, like, you know, it's never going to happen or it's so far away. It's not if you keep going, like every step counts. Yeah. Don't let the shiny Instagram posts make you feel bad. Like you can do it. It's just, it takes effort. That's all. Yeah. All right. So Bola, where can everyone find your book, find out more about you, let people know how they can keep up? Yeah. So the book is available everywhere. Books are sold in a physical book, ebook, audiobook. It's on Audible, Amazon, Target, Barnes and Noble, everywhere. And then you can find me at cleverwellfinance.com on Instagram at cleverwellfinance on YouTube at cleverwellfinance. Just search Bola Shokumbi or cleverwellfinance and you'll find something. Yeah. And I will link all that in the episode show notes. Thanks so much again. This was so fun, Bola. Thank you. It was fun catching up. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation with Bola. If you want the episode show notes, go to journeytolaunch.com slash episode 106. As I said before, her book is pretty solid. So I want you to go check it out. You can pick it up wherever you get books. Also, if you want a chance to win Bola's book, you can go to journeytolaunch.com slash win for your chance to win. Not only will you get entered to win a book, you'll also get access to my free resource library. All you got to do is enter your name and email. You don't really have to do anything other than enter your name and email to be put on the list to win the book. Now, don't forget, if you have not subscribed and reviewed the podcast on Apple Podcasts, that's the purple app on your phone. I'd love if you can do that. And of course, make sure you're following me on social media. That way we can keep up with each other. And I love to see when you screenshot that you're listening to the episode and you're posting it on your feed and sharing it in your stories. Make sure you tag me so I can see it and then stick around. So next week we're doing another book giveaway. So make sure you're staying tuned with everything that's going on and I'll speak to you next week. So until then, keep on journeying, journeyers. Journeyers.